वेलकम एवरीवन टुडे वी हैव विद अस शामवी रेगे हु इज एन एमएस ऑफ डेटा साइंस स्टूडेंट एट द न्यूयॉर्क यूनिवर्सिटी एंड ही विल बी डिस्कसिंग हर जर्नी टुडे सो हाय शामवी हाउ आर यू हाय आई एम गुड एंड आई एम रियली ग्लैड टू बी हियर विद यू ऑल ऑन दिस कॉल थैंक यू जॉइनिंग अस टुडे सो टू स्टार्ट विद व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ योर अंडरग्रेजुएट कॉलेज एंड द डिग्री ऑन एंड इफ यू डोंट माइंड ऑब्वियसली द ग्रेड यू वांट इन योर uh bachelors okay so i am from sardar patel institute of technology um and i pursued a bachelor in technology in electronics and telecommunication engineering and i had a grade of uh, 9.72 on 10 which was scaled down to a 3.96 on a 4 okay wow that's great so uh, in case the There's a candidate who doesn't have a good grade, unlike you. Uh, so, is there any other part of the application which can compensate for it? So, uh, for me personally, because I did not have any work experience before pursuing my masters, uh, the first thing that sort of stood out on my application was obviously uh, my academics, and because it is an academic program. uh you have to remember that they judge your uh, like how successful you would be in the program based on the academic success you had in your undergrad so that is definitely like the most important part that will be looked at and uh like if you have work experience or if you have relevant things on your application like your internships or some really good quality projects or research projects that you have done that can definitely compensate for um uh the grade that you have earned but uh, still like that uh, your grade will be like an important part on your application but that being said like for example there are like some colleges in india like um your iit and wits the the grades there are relative and uh, the grades in our college weren't relative so even if there is somebody with an 8.5 in um let's say in wits it's obviously different from someone with a 9.7 in uh, let's say spit where the uh, the grading is not relative so considering these things um like the whole like the focus can't completely be on the academic part of it so uh if like you have a good co- like if you come from a good college from your undergrad then definitely that does compensate for your grade like nobody is going to judge uh, like judge you on the basis of your Grade if you come from a really good college in your undergrad, but yeah. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, so moving on to what you mentioned about extracurricular activities or past internships. Mm. Uh, so like, uh, what all activities did you take part in while in college? Uh, so before uh, my masters, I pursued two internships. One was at Mahindra and Mahindra. and the other one was at a startup uh, which was incubated in um in spit which was uh, bitgeni technologies um so in these two internships i was a data science intern and um, uh, so in mahindra and mahindra i basically worked in the automotive division and i worked with energy consumption databases i had to uh, it, it was basically more of a eda kind of a role uh and in uh, bitgeni technologies uh, i worked on a range of projects with machine learning with app development and uh, also with some um analytics related to the um, products um then coming to the extracurricular activities uh um so i had a position of responsibility in the ieee student branch uh, at spit and also i was the chairperson for the a uh, women in engineering branch of ieee then i was also involved with some social work at uh, the apprentice project where i was a facilitator for coding uh, for underprivileged kids at a um, at, at a municipal school so yeah other than that i was also involved with a few uh, research projects apart from my academics like i also was involved with projects in my academics and um, some research projects that i worked on by myself Okay, so uh, like to sum it up, you had uh, some responsibility positions, uh, volunteering work, uh, research yes. projects, and uh, some 
technical competitions as well yes okay wow that's quite impressive okay so now uh, moving on to the uh, test aspects of our application uh, which test did you give and what were your uh, scores in them um so uh the I gave G the GRE and I had a three twenty. The breakup was one fifty three in uh, verbal and one sixty seven in quants. And I gave TOEFL uh, and my total score of uh, total score was hundred and seven. Okay, uh, so like, did your program uh, prefer one score as in uh, like did they focus on either quants or verbal or any of that? so for my program at anvayu um they firstly the uh, different programs either they like for 2020 and 2021 they waived off uh, a lot of the programs waived off gre but mine didn't uh, so they didn't like have a particular cut off for the scores but uh, but on their website they mentioned what were, what were the average scores of the incoming class for the previous year so for mine uh, for quants it was uh, 167 And for verbal, it was one fifty seven, but obviously I didn't have as much for the verbal. But then again, it's the average, so uh, I don't think it really matters that much because it's just one part of the application. And there is a cut off for TOEFL. I don't exactly remember what it was for my uh, program, but usually it lies somewhere between hundred to hundred and five for every other program. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh... And for the GRE and your applications, did you also consult any uh, counselor for the process? Ah uh, yes. So for my applications, I consulted a uh, college bond, and for GRE, I consulted Inspiris. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Shamvi, what the is there a LOR SOP tip that you would like to share with our viewers? uh so for your sop the main idea that should be in your mind is there should be some kind of a flow like it it should rep, it should not just be you know pointers of what you have done and like what motivates you what you're passionate about because you're applying for the program it should sort of like narrate it like a story basically like you know some there was some tipping point that led you to pursue this program there was some tipping point that motivated you to you know work on certain projects or intern in certain places and how it sort of added up or you know how it sums up to your decision to apply to this program and then it should also talk about what your future goals are or okay. what your short term or your long term goals are and how every little thing that you have done or you want to do in the program how it adds up to how it leads up to your goals that should be the main idea for writing an sop so for me uh, there was one actually a disadvantage because uh, we all say that you know data sci- uh, uh, it's it's a sort of a misconception that data science is like a continuation of computer science or it usually is a sub category of computer science which is not true so that is what was sort of like a disadvantage for me because i, I i'm obviously not from a computer science background so um coming from an electronics and telecommunication background i basically from through my sop i had to you know play that to my advantage like how um, an unconventional background will help me succeed in this program and help me get to my goals so the idea that i kept in mind was i have to look for uh, like i have to define my goals in such a way that my undergrad background help with my masters which is in data science will help me achieve these goals and uh, looking at that i also looked at certain courses in the masters program that i want to pursue or certain professors um, that i want to work with and then sort of i try to align the whole sop such that my interests and whatever i've done previously sort of aligns with their research interests and uh, so i i try to pick those projects and those ideas and then so i i i sort of align the whole sop in that manner okay Okay. Yeah, so, so that would be like an important thing to do to, um, you know, maintain a flow in your SOP so that the uh, so that the admission committee like gets your idea and you know okay. understands where you come from and like how everything will add up uh, to your short term and long term goals. 
just to uh, confirm, uh, yeah. just a very small point to confirm on this. So according mm-hmm. to you, it is better to uh, personalize the SOP rather than right. it being a generic one, right? Right, right, right. Got it. Okay. So uh, moving on the line of the courses, uh, Shamavi, so what are the courses that you applied for and in which schools did you apply for? So like if you could give a summary of the acceptances and the rejects that you got, that would be great. Okay. Okay, so I basically applied to two main courses. One was Masters in Information Systems and uh, Data Science. And the places that I applied to for Masters in Information Systems, uh, I uh, usually it had a bunch of um, uh, specializations within uh, the main course. So I uh, tried to go for uh, the Data Science uh, specialization in those. Uh, so like masters in information systems management or masters in information management system it just goes by different names in different schools so basically you will have to like uh look at the courses and even in data science it sort of varies from one school to another so um for masters in information management i applied to university of washington uh kelly school of business um texas a and m uh, Carnegie Mellon and um, and um, uh, UC Berkeley. Okay. And for um, data science, I applied to again University of Washington, uh, University of Pennsylvania, NYU, uh, Carnegie Mellon, um, University of Southern California, and um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Any particular so, reason why you ended up choosing and why you are data science among others? So, uh, okay, so, no, I, I didn't mention the admits and the rejects. Okay, yeah. so I got admitted to um, uh, NYU, obviously, yeah. then uh, University of Washington, University of Pennsylvania, um, USC, uh, Texas A&M for MIS, and Carnegie Mellon for MIS. And Oh, yeah, also Columbia. I applied to Columbia and I got waitlisted and then rejected really late in Columbia. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the reason, so basically my top three choices were uh, UPenn, uh, UW and NYU. And the reason I went with NYU because uh, the programs and all three of them were, because like my first choice was obviously data science. I had applied to uh the program i had applied to for in carnegie mellon um was business intelligence and data science like the specialization was in that uh, but like because i got into really good data science programs i obviously uh like my top three choices were those and uh the reason i went with nyu was because uh it was the program was more flexible than the one in uw and uh the one in uw was very uh I didn't have as many choices uh, and it was more of a foundational program than the one in NYU. So that was the reason I went with NYU and I chose it over the one in UPenn was because there wasn't enough industry concentration in UPenn. It was more research focused than industry focused. So yeah, that was one reason I went with NYU. Uh, moving on, Shamvi. So, uh, does the location of a college have any advantage while choosing, like for California, for instance, is a tech hub, while NYC being yes. a financial hub? So, what are the, what are any of the priorities while choosing the colleges? Yes. So, uh, actually, when I had a choice between UPenn and UW, that was one of the reasons that I was preferring UW over UPenn because. UW is in Seattle, which is, you have like your major companies there. you've got Amazon, Microsoft, and it does definitely play a, play, play a role because these companies, usually the tech companies, they do hire a lot from the colleges that are there in the vicinity. So even if like you would be from an Ivy League, let's say UPenn, but they'll rather prefer someone, you know, they do some, some companies do have target schools like. Uh, Microsoft, uh, like UW is one of the target schools for Microsoft and like uh, NYU is a target school for IBM, let's say. So, you know, 
uh, that does give some schools a location advantage over the others because um yeah it does matter and then there are a lot of startups that are coming up in uh let's say nyc or seattle so these startups do look for students who go to the schools you know um within the vicinity so uh, there is definitely a location advantage for some of them like you would hear some not so well known schools also but the, uh, the students there do get hired in um one of these companies so uh, yeah but because nowadays everything is remote um it's the location advantage may not be as much as it was back then but it's still there obviously hey folks thank you for watching our video please like and share this video and subscribe to our youtube channel also guys Please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below and see you soon with our next video.